Hey guys, it's Metacosis Perfect Snetters, where medicine makes perfect sense. Let's continue our biochemistry playlist. In previous videos, we finished talking about vitamins. We talked about the water-soluble vitamins, such as all vitamins B and vitamin C. We also talked about the fat-soluble vitamins, such as vitamin K, vitamin E, vitamin D, and vitamin A. We also talked about choline, which is not a vitamin, but a vitamin-like substance that happens to be water-soluble and important for your body. Now let's turn our attention to minerals. What do miners do in a mine? They mine minerals. Enough with these dad jokes. Let's get started. Please watch the videos in this playlist in order. We divide nutrients into macronutrients and micronutrients. Macronutrients, carbohydrates, proteins, and fat. Why do you call them macro? Because you need them in a huge amount every day. How about micronutrients? You need them in a lesser amount every day. And they include vitamins, the water-soluble and the fat-soluble. Don't forget my choline, which is water-soluble. And minerals, which include macro-minerals and micro-minerals. Macro-minerals are also known as macro-elements. And micro-minerals are known as micro-elements or trace elements. Why do you call these macro and these micro? Because on average, there are exceptions, you need these in more than 100 milligrams per day. But as for this, you will need an amount less than 100 milligrams per day. As we have discussed before, vitamins are coenzymes, but minerals are cofactors. These metals are needed by your body. Some of them are transition metals, about the middle of the periodic table, but others are alkali or alkaline earth metals, and they are on the left side of the periodic table if you remember your freaking chemistry. We divide nutrients into five groups, macronutrients, macro elements or macro minerals, including calcium, magnesium, sodium, potassium, chloride, and phosphate, whose deficiency can be fatal. Remember, sodium problems equals CNS problems, but calcium problems equals cardiac problems. If my sodium is too low or too high, I can get coma and die. How about my potassium? If it's too low or too high, it's bad for my heart. Potassium abnormalities can make my heart stop during diastole versus calcium abnormalities which can make my heart stop during systole. I know not 100% of cases will fit neatly into these little categories, but remember that calcium is the hero of contraction, ergo systole, but potassium is the hero of repolarization, ergo diastole. It makes sense. Then we have micro elements. You need them in a lesser amount and their deficiency can be serious, although rarely fatal. But if you overload on metals or minerals, unlike with vitamins, they can be very toxic to your kidney. You can end up with dialysis if you're not careful. Group number four, the role is unknown inside the body. Example, silicon. Toxic elements is group five, arsenic, mercury, cyanide. They serve no function in your body and they are toxic. And of course, don't forget, it's the dose that makes the poison. I will not be shocked if there is a trace amount of mercury in my blood. Who cares? But too much mercury? Oh boy, I'll be mad as a hatter. You know why they call them mad hatters? Because in the good old days, which were not so good, people whose occupation was to make hats were exposed to mercury. Occupational exposure and their toxicity literally made them mad. Which reminds me of Friedrich Nietzsche, which according to Paul Strathern, quote, succumbed to madness in Turin, unquote. But to be honest, Nietzsche had tertiary syphilis, all kinds of trypanema action in the brain, not mercury poisoning. Minerals are inorganic. This is the chemistry that deals with anything else but carbon. Minerals are relatively smaller in size compared to vitamins. Minerals are cofactors for enzymes. They are also building units. For example, calcium in my bones, teeth, iron in my hemoglobin, copper in my ceruloplasmin, iron in my myoglobin. Here are my macro minerals and micro minerals. Pause and review. By the way, you can download all of these handwritten notes on my website metacosisperfectsnetis.com minerals small in size inorganic water soluble because look at these all of these are what ions if you're ionized you are polar you are charged you are water soluble not lipid soluble functions of minerals in the body they are micronutrients they are essential nutrients at that because your body cannot synthesize them from scratch therefore you have to take them in some way 
including your diet, of course. They are building units of bones, teeth, hemoglobin, myoglobins. They are cofactors for many enzymes. Indeed, one third of the total enzymes in your body require some kind of mineral as a cofactor. Some of them require zinc. Others require manganese or magnesium or iron, etc. Enzymes are catalysts. If I help the enzyme, I help with the catalytic process. Minerals can bind to the substrate before it binds to the enzyme and orient it properly so that the reaction can proceed like a sharp knife through warm butter. Minerals mediate reduction oxidation reactions. Minerals stabilize or shield the negative charges. Why? Because most of these are positively charged ions. They can shield the negative charges. So what? Uh, protons can do that too. But notice, most of these are divalent. Iron sometimes is trivalent. So they are even better than the proton in shielding the negative charge. Moreover, minerals stabilize your nucleic acids, such as DNA and RNA. For instance, magnesium, manganese, cobalt bind phosphate in your nucleic acid to protect it. Otherwise, if you leave the negative charges of phosphate exposed, these negative charges will bind to anything positive around them, which will ruin your DNA structure. Do you want that, Cody? Magnesium, especially, is a doozy. Many enzymes that mediate no Nucleic acid reactions require magnesium as a cofactor. That's a very important fact. Next, what's the difference between metalloenzymes and metal activated enzymes? Here is the difference metalloenzymes are tightly bound to the metal ion cofactor. These are enzymes tightly bound to the cofactor. But metal activated enzymes are also enzymes loosely bound to the cofactor. Here, the cofactor is usually a transition metal ion, such as iron, zinc, copper, etc., in the middle of the periodic table. But metal activated enzymes are usually bound to cofactor, which are alkali or alkaline earth metal ions on the left side of the periodic table sodium potassium calcium magnesium etc these enzymes with their cofactor will play a catalytic role but these enzymes will play a structural role example you need copper for lysyl oxidase to catalyze the cross-linking of collagen fibers that's a catalytic role but you need calcium literally in your bones that's a structural role. So let's summarize everything. Nutrients are either macronutrients, carbs, proteins, fat, or micronutrients, vitamins and minerals. The vitamins are water-soluble or fat-soluble. The minerals are macro-minerals or micro-minerals. This is your good old periodic table, if you remember. Transition metals are around here. On the left side, you have the alkali metals, group 1, and the alkaline earth metals, group 2. Why do you tell me about all of this? I hated chemistry. I don't understand why chemistry is important for me as a physician. Shut the French toast up. Let me tell you. Let me give you 11 concrete examples of why this is huge and clinically relevant to you. Fact number one. Have you noticed that both calcium and magnesium are transported together in the loop of Henley? Yeah, you know why? They belong to the same group. One can replace the other. I'll come back to calcium and magnesium towards the end of these facts. Fact number two. Have you noticed that your distal collecting tubules and collecting ducts will reabsorb sodium but secrete potassium? They are in the same group, in the same family, in the periodic table. Fact three. Have you noticed that your distal convoluted tubules and collecting duct will reabsorb sodium but secrete hydrogen? Yeah, they are in the same group. Moreover, aldosterone will either excrete hydrogen or excrete potassium, but not together, because one shall replace the other since they belong to the same group in the periodic table. Fact number four. Many patients who are hypertensive have a condition that is not just associated with high sodium in the diet, but also to low potassium in the diet. So if I were you, if I'm hypertensive, I'm decreasing my salt intake and 
boosting my potassium intake. Fact number five. Some of the low-salt foods available on the shelves in the supermarket contain sodium alternatives. Guess what these alternatives are made from? From potassium. Why? It belongeth to the same family in the periodic table. However, potassium has two drawbacks. Number one, it's relatively more expensive than sodium. Problem number two, it has a more bitter taste. Fact number six. Cadmium and mercury, the mad hatter, can replace the zinc of the RNA polymerase. No RNA polymerase, no transcription, no transcription, no translation, i.e. no protein synthesis, which explains why mercury is toxic, why cadmium is toxic. Well, they are kicking zinc in the nuts. Why did they do that? Well, they couldn't help it. They belong to the same group in the periodic table. Fact number seven, the radioactive strontium made lots of people worried about its radioactivity. Why? because it belongs to the same group as calcium, meaning it can replace calcium in your bones. My bones without calcium equals bone fractures, a very common cause of death in the elderly population. And now you know why strontium can replace calcium. It belongs to the same group. Fact number eight, magnesium supplements can decrease my risk of calcium kidney stones. Why? Magnesium will replace the calcium, which means calcium will not precipitate in the crystal in the stone, lowering your risk of calcium nephrolithiasis. And of course, you should drink water to decrease your risk of stone precipitation. You need to increase the solvent to lower the risk of the precipitation of the solute, if you remember your basic chemistry. Fact number nine, there is calcium in the bone. That's normal, that's natural. You know what else is in the bone? Uh, magnesium. It makes perfect sense. Next, copper in your body for the most part is Cu2+, and zinc in your body is also Zn2+. And guess what? They compete for the same protein transporter in your intestine. It's called metallothionin, ergo. Excessive zinc intake will make me copper deficient and vice versa. Excess copper intake will make me deficient in zinc, which is not good for my RNA polymerase. Fact number 11, back to calcium and magnesium. What's the most common cause of tetany? Hypocalcemia. Okay, medicosis, I checked my patient's calcium, and I'm sure the calcium is fine, the albumin is fine, there is no alkalosis, I, 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 check, I check everything. Okay, big boy, go look for hypomagnesemia, because it can also lead to tetany. And now you understand why. Why magnesium has an influence on the PTH, just like calcium does. After all of this, if a doofus in the comment section says, Hey, medicosis, I have, no, I have no idea why chemistry is so relevant in medicine. Why are we studying this? I will kick that gluteus maximus, metaphorically speaking. Chemistry is important. But why didn't my chemistry teacher tell me this? Because he's a chemistry teacher. He's not a physician. Chemistry alone is too much. How do you expect him to know medicine too? And then to tie both of them together. That's why you need a medicosis in your life, who's nothing but a doofus in his kitchen. So by now, I hope you appreciate your minerals. Do you want to learn more about the toxidromes that can afflict the human condition? Such as lead poisoning, mercury poisoning, cadmium poisoning, cobalt toxicity, arsenic poisoning, drowning hypothermia, acute respiratory distress, syndrome, arrhythmias, strokes, myocardial infarctions, then download my emergency medicine high yields course at medicosisperfectsnellis.com. If you do not want to download my courses to your computer and would rather watch them right here on YouTube, click on the join button and choose the highest tier to get instant access to more than 300 premium medicosis videos. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe, hit the bell, click on the join button. Please support the channel here or here. Go to my website to download my courses, notes, and cases. Be safe, stay happy, study hard. This is Medicosis Perfectionatus, where medicine makes perfect sense.